The last function that we're going to look at this week is multiplication. And let's just uh, start with an example here. We have a multiplicand and a multiplier that are each four bit numbers. Um, or, yeah, four bits. The multiplicand uh, we show here is 1100, zero, zero, and that's in uh, base 10, that would be the number 12, and the multiplier is a 0101, zero, zero, one. again in base 10, that would be the number 5. So doing multiplication, um, like we learned, uh, or at least I learned when I was in grade school, um, we take the multiplicand and we first multiply, we take the lowest order uh, digit of our multiplier and multiply it by the multiplicand and pull that down. So since in this case our digits are one or zero, if the multiplier digit is a one, we take the multiplicand as is and copy it down to the first row. Now the second partial product would be taking the multiplier the next bit over to the left, which is the second bit from the right, instead of the very right bit, it's the next bit to the right of the multiplier. In this case it's a zero, we multiply that by the entire multiplicand so we get all zeros out and we shift it to the left by one since we're one bit over on the multiplier. And so we have a sequence of four zeros there shifted to the left by one. We go to the next bit in the multiplier, which is the, uh, the third one from the right. So not the first one or second one, third one from the right. It's the number one. So we take our multiplicand and multiply it by one. So we take that as is, pull it down, but shift it over two bits worth as our partial product. And then finally, we take the last bit of the multiplier, which is a zero, gives us all zeros when multiplied by the multiplicand, and we copy it down, shift it over three bits to the, to the left. So now we have four partial products based on the number of bits in our multiplier, and we have to add those four partial products together to get our total product, and once we do that addition, uh, we get the number in uh, base 2 on the left, and that's a number 60 in base 10 on the right. So as you can see, if we're doing a multiplication of base 2 numbers, we need to do, based on the number of bits in the multiplicand of n bits, and the multiplier of n bits, uh, doing n by m bit multiplication produces n number of m bit partial products and the total sum is going to be n plus m bits wide. So here we have the more generalized form for this, uh, what the, the value of each individual partial product um, uh, bit placement is and what the general value of the product is coming out. So if we have a multiple canned value of y that has m bits in it, we have y of m minus 1, m minus 2, down to y of 0, and a multiplier that has n bits in it, uh, which is x, we have x of n minus 1, x of n minus 2, down to x of 1, x of 0. Uh, we take and multiply uh, those two together, in effect multiplying the sum of y sub j, where j is 0 to m minus 1, and sum of x sub i, where i is 0 to n minus 1, and each position as you go to the next position is 2x the value. So the zeroth, zeroth bit is 2 to the 0, which is a value of 1 or 0. The next bit over is going to be a value of 0 or 2. The next bit over is going to be a value of 0 or 4. You know, that's how our binary numbers work. You have, you know, 
every digit over you go is a multiple of two more than the digit before it. Um, so the overall product of that is going to be, or the product of those two numbers together, is going to be summing up each of the partial products in the appropriate 2 to the i plus j position uh, because as you go 1 over in each your multiplicand and your multiplier, um, you wind up going another bit position over in your partial product. So uh, this is just graphically um, equation-wise. The product is in mathematical equation format. And then graph graphically, you can see how uh, the partial products are each, depending on the bit position of x and y, what partial product you're looking at. And then the final sum will be summing each column going down. Uh, and so we need to sum uh, a large number of sums that we're doing and partial products in order to get our final product out at the bottom. If we take just the partial products from the, the previous FOIL that we showed, um, you can see that each uh, entry of each bit of the partial product is a bit of the x number, one bit from that, multiplied by one bit from the y uh, multiplier, or the x multiplier multiplied by the y multiplicand. Um, so if instead of showing what every value is, if we just put a dot to represent each bit, um, here we can see what a an array would look like uh, kind of of those partial products. So each partial product is a row and then the columns are the things that we need to sum up in order to get our final answer at the bottom. And we'll have uh, the number of rows we have will depend on the number of bits in our multiplier and then the length of each row is the number of bits in our multiplicand. And you can see uh, when we get larger values of multiplier and multiplicand, we get a huge number of bits that we need to do calculations on. Um, so uh, this is graphically showing us um, how many bits we need to, to work with. And uh, in the next slide, I'll, I'll get into the details of what we need to do in order to get the value of each bit. Here we have functionally uh, what we'll call an array multiplier. Uh, so here each uh, positional value of the, uh, the dots that we saw in the previous FOIL um, contains logic that effectively um, the squares there are showing what needs to go into, um, for each one that has a square, the, the values that are going in to calculate what needs to be in that particular spot in the array. So where there's a square, it means we have an x value coming in and a y value. Um, so if we look in the, the lower left side, uh, the x value is actually the value b, and the y value is the value a that's going into that square. Then we have a sum in that's coming in um, for the top row or the most significant bits, the sum in is actually a zero value. But if you're in more the center of the array, uh, then a sum in is the sum coming from the previous row. So we have a sum that's coming in, and we also have a carry that's coming in from the previous row, but one bit down. And then uh, with a normal um, full adder type function, we have a sum and a carry that goes out of that bit as well. Um, turns out since if we, we look at the functionally what's happening in that square is actually we're summing together the multiplication of that x and y value. If you multiply um, a single bit digital bit 0 or 1 for x or 0 1 for y, 
Um, if either bit is a zero, you get a zero out. Um, and if you multiply them together, the only way you get a one out is if both bits are one. So you can take that value of a and b, or x and y, and and them together, and then send that result into a normal, um, if you go back to our adder function, uh, the normal full bit adder has two uh, values going in, and instead of a and b, we're sending the anding of a and b, or in this case, the anding of an x bit and a y bit, with uh, summing that together with the sum in from the previous row and the carry in from the previous row. And those are our three inputs going into our full adder bit, and then we get a sum out and a carry out. And those go, uh, you can see how the connections uh, go in this, uh, traveling from the upper right down uh, to the sums go straight down and the carries go down to the left um, from each bit successively through the, uh, through the array to the lower order operands. And then the final row is just having an A and B go in because we're, um, and the values of the A and B are coming from the previous uh, row um, for, and that's for the final sum at the very bottom in order to get our final values out of the array. Now the array that we saw on the previous slide um, is fine for logically figuring out, okay, this is how uh, logically this behaves, but if we were actually laying it out on an integrated circuit die, we really don't want to consume that much area in both the X and the Y. Um, we, we do need that the, the Y height, um, but uh, we don't need it by basically having it go at an angle and consuming more X dimension, uh, we consume a lot more actual layout on die. So instead of having an angle like that, we can just kind of squash the array um, so that it fits a regular rectangular floor plan. And this is how we would actually lay it out and do the connections uh, on a real silicon die. Um, and so you can go back and compare this uh, foil and exactly how it's laid out uh, versus the other one. But overall, this is going to consume less area, uh, but it will logically behave the exact same as the uh, uh, depiction on the previous foil. Of course, one of the problems that we can see with um, multiplying large values together is the array multiplier. If it's n number of bits, that requires n partial products. So as we get to larger and larger multiplier values and bits, we get uh, a large number of partial products. And then, of course, we take up a lot of area and it's a lot of delay and obviously time um, to calculate all the partial products. Now, if instead of looking at it uh, in the way we have been, if we, where we've been looking at each bit as an individual bit, if we looked at groups of bits, so groups of like our bits together, we could form instead of n partial products, we could form n divided by r partial products. And if we could do this, uh, we could possibly create something that's faster and smaller than the designs we've been looking at. And this is called radix two to the r encoding. So up until now, what we've been looking at is r equal one. So radix two encoding is the type of multiplier we've been looking at. If on the other hand, r equals two, that would be radix four encoding. <clears throat> if we did radix four encoding, uh, we would now form partial products since we're using two bits at a time. That would either be a value of zero, a value of y, two y, or three y. Um, now doing a value of zero, y, or two y is actually pretty easy because value of y is just y, value of zero is just all zeros. 
value of 2y is taking the value of y and shifting it to the left one, but doing the value of 3y is harder because it actually requires using an adder bit to do that. Um, so one solution to that is what they call booth encoding. Um, and so an example here is instead of using the value of 3y, try using a value of minus y and then incrementing the next partial product um, to add 4y. So because getting 4y, we just take y and shift it by two bits to get 4y and then minus y um, is added instead of y for this bit. Um, so uh, now booth encoding is quite complex. Um, there's a section on it in the book. I would recommend uh, if you're interested in doing a booth encoded multiplier, um, uh, looking at the information in the book or uh, looking up um, actual either online on the web or look up papers um, of people who have done booth encoders to get more information on that topic.